There's a long-standing tradition of using immunotherapy in the management of metastatic kidney cancer. And much of the biology really lends itself well to these approaches. We know that this, tumors, that this tumor type uh, is often highly infiltrated, meaning if we examine kidney cancer tissue under the microscope or using next-generation sequencing, we find a high degree of infiltrating immune cells in the microenvironment of the tumor. So that by itself suggests that immunotherapy may be effective. There are various types of immunotherapy that have been successfully employed for the treatment of kidney cancer. And most recently, uh, there has been an approval for a PD-1 inhibitor, and checkpoint inhibitors in general are being considered now a um, new standard uh, class of actions in this disease. Checkpoint inhibitors can target inhibitory checkpoints, such as PD-1 or CTLA-4. They can also uh, act, um, target activating checkpoints, such as CD70 uh, or OX40, and many of such treatments are actually being investigated actively for kidney cancer. Beyond that, there are several other ways to manipulate the immune system in hope to have a good an anti-tumor effect, and that uh, includes cytokines, which have a long-standing tradition in kidney cancer and continue to do so, but also manipulators of the immune microenvironment, such as uh, adenosine receptor antagonists, macrophage uh, um, inhibitors such as CSF1 inhibitors, um, and also drugs that target uh, metabolism such as glutaminase inhibitors or IDO inhibitors. So really there's a multitude of new avenues that are being explored to harness a response to the immune system of the patient. pdl one expression, of course, is a logical biomarker to explore in any disease that is being treated with a PD-1 or a pdl one inhibitor. And uh, testing of uh, pd one expression in tumor tissues has been incorporated since the very beginning of developing these strategies uh, in RCC. What we've learned in the early development of PD-1 and pd one inhibitors, that the extent of target expression, meaning pd one expression either on the tumor cells or the immune cells, does track with the likelihood of response. But a very important message we learned is that patients with low expression levels can still have excellent benefit from these therapies. In the phase three setting, on the Checkmate 025 study, which was a randomized trial comparing nivolumab to everolimus, we saw that the extent of benefit that the novel drug, nivolumab, uh, demonstrated over everolimus did not at all depend on pdl one expression. What that means is patients, whether they had high or low pdl one expression, had better overall survival and higher objective response rates with a checkpoint inhibitor compared to the gold standard at the time, everolimus. So ultimately, pdl one expression is of relevance for biomarker development and academic exploration of this disease, but currently has no role in clinical practice the way it may have in lung cancers. The safety and efficacy of nivolumab as a second-line agent is as outstanding. I have found no additional toxicity in my patients when I use it. It's been well tolerated and well received um, by my patients. They enjoy the ability to come into clinic in, in 30 to 60 minutes, receive an infusion with minimal to no side effects, especially, remember many of these patients have already received frontline VEGF inhibitors and have had toxicities. At most, my patients experience fatigue and flu-like illnesses. When I look at the several hundred patients I've treated, I've only have one or two that had such a severe toxicity that it required me to discontinue therapy and utilize a steroids to resolve the toxicity. That was um, uh, arthritis, um, almost like a rheumatoid arthritis type condition that resulted in complete um, discontinuation of the therapy. So the question uh, is when and where and can we use the immune checkpoint inhibitor as a frontline treatment by itself or in combination? <clears throat> so it's a very, very um, interesting question and it's a very, very important question. I think in the future, what we're going to see, checkpoint inhibitor will be a frontline, but not as monotherapy. That's my take on it. Because uh, it's, again, every time I talk about treatment, it's based on mechanism. It's not really just based on A or B is available or not. VEGF treatment transformed the way we treat kidney cancer because you work on 80% of patients. 30% patients will have response. 50% patients have stable disease. But if you take a look at checkpoint inhibitors, 
it is it's working response rate maybe 20, 25 percent, and maybe 30 percent of patients who have a stable disease. So you are you are missing the chance to give maybe 30 percent of pa patient will progress on single agent, PD1 or PD01 antibody. So you you, you are taking you're giving them a, a higher chance to progress instead of giving them a benefit. So I'm not a big fan of monotherapy, of checkpoint inhibitor. I'm a big fan of combination. And, and, and I think it's because you're combining different mechanisms. And we know VEGF inhibitors, some of them will modulate the immune response too. So when you put them together, that's why we're going to see it. Because you, the, the most trial that we're going to see from, the, from now on actually for starting for the past couple of years, it's already starting from the uh, bevacizumab plus atezolimumab. It's actually showing some efficacy there. So now you're going to see you know, lamvatinib plus PD-1 antibody, exitinib plus PD-1, cabozantinib plus PD-1 antibody. All these are frontline treatment. And I think they are going to beat sunitinib. And that's why everybody using sunitinib is the one that go golden boy. But now, now everybody wants to beat sunitinib. And that's, that's telling us, What's the, the future? And the response, it's, that's why so it's golden, golden age, because it's a combination therapy. It's, we migrate through the modern age of monotherapy. We in the golden age is combination therapy.